to, to have described this movie, I'd watch it today for my first personal experience of watching it. I have seen the trailer before and I now could understand how and why this particular animation film, another great and wonderful speechless masterpiece uh, conducted by Miyazaki. I could understand how it had become so mainstream, so popular. I myself, my name is Cody Gremlin. I was born and raised in Tokyo, Japan on a small Pacific Island in the 90s. And uh, I've always had a, a deeper fascination and interest with anime, uh, animation films, anything that has to relate to my culture, my heritage, and uh, there are no human expression of words enough to describe this particular film. It was, it was innocent, it was pure, it, as pure as possible. And uh, the, the main cast, her name was Chihiro. Chichiro, Ch Chihiro. And this movie, throughout the duration of it, it led you throughout this interesting journey. Um, there are no words to describe it, like I said. It, I, I, there, there are only a few handful of movies that actually ever had left me speechless. As such, a previous movie that I'd watched and left me speechless personally was the new modern remake for Stephen King, It. You know, the, with uh, Bill Skarsgård, Pennywise a Clown. Uh, this movie, it, it's, it strikes a core in your heart and it feels as if a lot of Miyazaki films are thought-provoking, it challenges your consciousness, it's, it pulls at the heartstrings, uh, at the center of your spiritual heart and your your mind and everything that you are. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie, uh, throughout half of the video, I found myself breaking down. Uh, <laughs> it was most definitely emotional, and it reminded me so much of how grateful one should should be <clears throat> to having true love in your life and to balance yourself and an upright in, in the light. <clears throat> and, uh, how the smallest, finite thing in your life, in your human existence, could actually be stripped away from you within a heartbeat. And how grateful how much true love and light actually conquers over everything else. And considering this was actually my first time watching this, uh, my next movie I'm going to be conduct for uh, a movie review will be uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. I regret not having watching these films much sooner. I had watched numerous films by Miyazaki quite a few times before, uh, such as Howl's Moving Castle, My Neighbor Totoro, and Princess Mononoke. I have no idea why I, I regret not having to watch Spirit Away much sooner. And 
this the plot line is actually quite simple. Uh, the the main the character, the girl, uh, Chihiro, she, her and her parents, they drive to uh, the destination of their new house that her parents had purchased. And they stumble across this hidden path and they they stumble upon this particular oh, spoiler alert before you watch more of this video they stumble upon this rather interesting but different uh, spiritual bizarre community and they find themselves leading themselves into an unknown world a different alternative spiritual dimension if you will where the two parents they they're attracted by the scent of delicious food and so they stumble upon this this kiosk side of the road uh, kind of like village uh, restaurant little cafe if you will and uh, They're, they're consumed by their greed and inconsideracy and their apathy. And they decide to eat food alongside of the road. <laughs> and it's just one thing that you do not do is to, you know, if you, if you don't see anyone around and as if that's suspicious enough and it should alert your enhancement of your of your conscience mind if you don't see anyone around don't eat from the food especially if it's already like hot fresh and ready to eat and you don't see anyone around it's kind of suspicious so they find themselves devouring and being gluttonous and devouring away eating all this food until they finally turn into pigs and so the main character she goes out on this quest she gets hired while well, she searches out Yababa uh, Yababa which uh, she's a, a witch sorceress uh, the head honcho the, the lady in charge of that particular village and that community that collective community there and she operates a bathhouse. And so Chichiro, Chichiro, she finds herself wanting so desperately to apply for a position for a job there to get hired. And so she does. And not, at least not without a struggle or fight of desperation, um, begging for that position. And she gets hired there in order to, she's there for a time being in order to help save her parents, bring them back to their normal selves, or humanistic selves, and to to leave that that dimensional reality. And, God. But I just, just thinking about the movie, it just makes me emotional, just talking about it, just thinking about it. Uh, huh. it's hard to do this video. I never had conducted a movie review where I, I, I struggled so hard to push words out of my lungs and my mouth. And, oh God. So anyway, uh, uh, true love conquers everything else and her and her family. You know, towards the beginning of the movie, she you could see that she was someone of spoiled, bratty, apathetic, just constantly procrastinating about virtually, like literally everything. You know, moving into the new house, and the long drive. And all throughout the duration of her time in that particular portal, that 
spiritual alternative dimension. At the end of the movie, she finds herself more humble, more content, more grateful. And she finds her purpose. She finds her her true love, you know, her purpose, her, her happiness, her... She helps this community in such a way that, you know, she becomes, I suppose you could say, like, more or less, like, friends with them. She, she picked up along in her journey a uh, few friends, love interest. And one of my favorites got to be the... The boiler room, the, I forgot the gentleman's name. Uh, it'll come back to me soon enough. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, the sprites, I absolutely love those little creatures. I'm trying to think of the older gentleman who was in charge of the boiler room, who had like, who looked like a spider, he had like six arms. Anyway, I, I absolutely love that character. Simply because at first he was a bit rude, a bit standoffish, defensive, if you will, hostile, and unwelcoming. So the, I love the sprites, the little black little creatures. Uh, they remind me so much of from the uh, My Neighbor Totoro movie. And God, those things are so adorable. Uh, I definitely want to collect a whole bunch of those like plushes now. And those things are so cool. They're they help, they're helping the older, the, the gentleman who was operating in a boiler room uh, for all these like lumps of coal. And I thought it was so fascinating how these little creatures are so small, like so tiny. However, they they were up there like picking up this like coal and everything. And they were just dragging it to the other side and then throwing them into the, the furnace in there. Uh, basically, making steam um, for the bathhouse there and so she the main character uh, Chihiro she decides to pick up one all of a sudden it's like it's, it's weighs like a bar of gold you know like a concrete block or something and she just had a struggle of a time picking it up and that was fascinating to me and I I absolutely love this little creature here, the the no face little monster. And this thing was amazing. He actually had a way to materialize gold out of nothingness, out of thin air, and uh, he ends up like swallowing some people, or one of the frog, and a couple people there in a the bathhouse. So that was interesting. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Hey. What's up? What's going on? How much, man? I seem to have noticed that within the many works of Miyazaki films and his artistic creations and his masterpiece, as immaculate as his film projects are, you submerge yourself deeper within his reality, the reality in which he had manifested from a channeling derived from nothingness. The only thing derived is from the creation of his own inspiration, a place where he had discovered a balance, a sense of purpose, a clarity within blackness and light and through that influence that derived inspiration and in art and imagination you find so much of his immaculate masterpiece to be thought-provoking as it helps you to question everything around you it helps you to find the light and his uh, his works definitely breaks you down as a human being it has a, it has a way to channeling your emotions 
God. It really had a way to, uh, uh, of this movie in particular, spirit a way to break me down. You know, in every relationship, you have your positive and negatives. And that this particular story of kind of like a Romeo and Juliet I found inspiration through that and it helped me to a uh, deeper understanding and realization in consciousness of how how much true love actually conquers everything and I've uh, I've never had true love to my entire life till now, and uh, <clears throat> I thought of how inspirational it was to me personally. How I'd always have dreamt of uh, having true friendship. I always aspired in my vision to one day had a a true devotion of a relationship, a bonding to a woman of my my dreams and <laughs> here I discovered it. I discovered my own Juliet per se. And uh, my entire life I'd wandered throughout my existence of being a oh God. A lone wolf. Just, my purpose was born on this earth as a star seed, a Pleiadian light worker to bring about a purpose through these videos and virtually everything I do in my life, my human existence, to, to become the wolf leading the wolf pack. In conclusion of this particular video, the two embodiments of, of what was portrayed within this movie, uh, are the two things that I had so desperately attempted to pursue all throughout my my life, and uh, needless to say, I I have one down. But uh, as far as true friendships are concerned, uh, there's always a personal borderline between professional and personal life. I never had a successful friendship in my life. And it's like I said, I've always been a lone wolf and uh, to trust others has always been a complication for me personally. Friendship seems to, uh, all throughout my life, just kind of come and go. <laughs> so in a story, I, in this fairy tale, which I wish it was more of a reality than a fairy tale, a, a world as a spiritual world as this would have been a suffice as something wonderful and beyond words and beautiful. But I envy the monster, the, the no face spirit, and his relationship with the main character, Chiro. Just so connected together, intermingled, you know. Yeah. Friendship seems always come and go. No matter how hard I try to keep the relationship together, whatever positive that I do or say or otherwise, and it seems like it always just kind of 
weaves apart and frails apart on its own. So, anyway. My name is Cody Gremlin. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, uploading new video content every day. And be sure to give this video a like. Thank you everyone for watching. And I, my next video project I'm going to conduct for a movie review will be... Not Howl's Moving Castle. Uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. It's what I'm looking towards. And just as always, his films always... Just deeply inspires me. Uh, just... changes you so I shall see you soon